choir is good singing. Bless my heart. Thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate the spirit and how you sung. Bringing honor and glory to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I'm glad as long as I'm in my right mind, I'll never forget that day when he saved me. Boy, he made a change in me. Changed my eternal destination. I was a sinner headed for a place called hell. But that day, that marvelous moment, things changed. And I've been sealed ever since that day. And I'm still sealed until that day of redemption. When my eyes shall behold the king. By faith I see him now, but one day my eyes are going to behold him. Just like Job said in the Old Testament. Though worms may destroy this flesh, yet I'm going to see God. Yeah. If you're saved, you're going to see him one day. In the, book of, in the whole book of the Bible, Moses wanted to see his face. And God told Moses, he said, no one see my face and live. Yeah. He said, I'll tell you what I'll do. He said, I'll put you in the cleft of the rock. He said, when I pass by, I'll put my hand up. Mm. And I'll let you see my backward side as I go by. But I'm glad one day we're going to see his face. Amen. How was we able to see his face? <laughs> Through his son. Yeah. His son. Over there in the New Testament, he told the disciple there, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. See, Jesus is the express image of God the Father. And we'll be able to see him, not by our good works, not by our good deeds, yep. but through his son, Jesus Christ. We Amen. welcome you. I'm glad for those of you that are here this morning in the Lord's house. Man, we've got sickness, 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 crud and flu and whatever it is that's going through. So we need to pray for all these that aren't able to be here today, but thankful for those of you that can. And you know, I don't really know this stuff much, but I, I didn't get the yellow memo. <laughs> I've noticed in a sea of yellow over here, so I didn't, but it's good to see everybody. We welcome you. If you're joining us by the internet, we're glad to have you as well. Uh, just make yourself at home and worship the Lord. A few announcements. Tuesday morning, the Bible study at 10 o'clock. Wednesday night, choir practice at 6.30. Bible study for the adults here in the sanctuary at 7. Bible study and youth activities for the youth down in the Christian Life Center at 7 o'clock. The women's Bible study will be March the 28th at 10 a.m. There's some VBS, VBS visitation dates in your bulletin. Please be marking your calendar if you're willing to help us go out and try to invite folks to VBS. And then the dates for Vacation Bible School is listed there June 14th through the 19th. That's right around the corner. Easter's right around the corner. I mean, we're March 1st today, right? So time is marching on. It's not stopping or slowing down for any of us. So let's be workers in the Lord's field. I'll preach on that in a little while maybe. Basketball. This coming Friday night, 630, down in the Christian Life Center. So y'all remember that. Some starting to stretch now and get ready. So that's Friday night at 630. That's when the doors open. So remember that. Also, our joint church service that we have with Clifton Memorial Baptist Church that will be Wednesday night March 18th okay Wednesday March 18th that's our joint service at Clifton Memorial starts at 7 o'clock and Lord willing brother Tim Flippin will be bringing the message there that night so let's pray for him and let's pray for that service coming up March 18th all right, are there any announcements that I've left out or something you'd like to make? I've got two. Go ahead. I've got two. Okay. Uh, first of all, the young folks are going to meet at 15. Not next Sunday, but the Sunday after. Uh, 8 o'clock. Sunday morning. Right when the fellowship group. Not this church, but 8 o'clock. All you men that come out, be with us. We've got some things that we need to discuss and talk over with. Thank you. 
great thing there, but that sound and the record work that we've been doing over there is just March the 25th will be the new start. All right, so you remember these announcements. <coughs> Any more? Anywhere? If not, certainly those that we need to be praying for, let me mention the needs from our church, the lost. And I know some of you get tired of hearing me say that, but until the whole world gets saved, I'll be saying it first. Amen. The lost need to be saved. Amen. If you're here today and you're lost, you're closer to hell than you was last Sunday. I want yeah. you to know that. We're still praying for you. Jesus is still drawing you, and he wants to save you. Yeah. Choice is yours. Yeah. I trust you'll make the right choice today before you leave this place. Tammy Estes' family, her father passed away this week. The service is today down in Greensboro, so remember Sister Tammy and the family. Uh, Brother Mike, he's still sick, Mike Estes. J.D. and Marla's not, still not able to be here. You know the condition there. Remember them. Uh, Connie Hensley with her leg. Brother Larry Schlate with his leg. Adeline Cochran goes tomorrow to get her cataract fixed, so remember her, please. Uh, so many with the crud. I know Matt Goins has it. Lonely Chilton has it. Mary Leach has it. Warren Wilson has it. I know these all have it, so remember these. Brandon's had the flu, but he's doing better. Glad he's able to be back. Uh, Jimmy and Abby Riggs, remember them. Luke and Ruth Oakley. Uh, Joanne Osborne, sister up in Pennsylvania, had major surgery. That's where Don and Joanne have been, so remember them. David Banks' mom with her knee replacement. Vacation Bible School's coming. I'd ask that you remember my mother. She's having surgery tomorrow. Please pray for her if you would. Uh, Patricia Lowe, that's Kendra's grandmother. I found out this morning that she got to come home, so that's a good thing. But continue to pray for Miss Lowe. Betty Shore and Frenchie, they're both sick. And then Joey and the boys that was here this morning right after Sunday school, he come up to me and says, we're going to have to go. My head is just split and it's killing me. So remember him and uh, his bad headache. And then uh, Christy Halstead, she's still recovering from surgery. Samantha, still remember her with her health issues. So we just got many, many, many that are sick and hurting and having surgeries and tests. And, but, you know, that's the way the flesh is, folks. Jeff, he's got to go. Donna's going, I think, to get some checking. So, uh, you know, getting old is not a good thing. It comes with a price. So did salvation come with the greatest price yeah. when Jesus shed his blood and gave his life and no matter what you think about it you say well I, I'm still fairly young and I don't understand why my health's going you know Jesus died at 33 mm. 33 and a half I'm way past those years he's blessed me Charlie amen but he died for me he died for the sins of the world yeah. so <coughs> we've all got health issues we've all got problems but there again, talking about Job. Job had his afflictions, and Job had his problems, and Job had his suffering. But all of that brought Job closer to God. Read the end of the book of Job. And he had twice more at the end than he had at the beginning. Staying true to the Lord is the most important thing you can do in your life. Any others before we pray? Anybody, anywhere? Charlie Newman, don't forget him. He needs our prayers. He's waiting on some test results. And I'm going to ask you, Charlie, would you pray for us this morning, please?
Amen. Thank you, Charlie. Appreciate the good on the prayer. If you're able, stand with us and turn in your blue hymnal. Page 453. Leading on the everlasting Come lead us. Okay, thank you. 453. Yes, sir. You go right ahead. Four fifty three in the blue hymnal, all three verses leaning on the everlasting arm. standing as the ushers come and we receive the morning tithes and offerings please Brock ask the blessing over the tithes and offerings please Amen. Be seated, please. one with another please
Does anybody want to sing one for us this morning? Victory song, come right on. morning in the book of Ruth. Book of Ruth, chapter number two. This type of message this morning is one that you don't hear preached <laughs> very much. It's not exactly one of those that's going to make you run the aisle and shout glory hallelujah. 
It may turn that way, but but it's instruction from God's Word. And I feel like it's what He's given us for this morning, and we need to hear it. And God's Word will not return unto Him void. It'll accomplish what He sends it forth to do. The book of Ruth, chapter number 2, begin reading in verse number 1. I've simply titled this message this morning, God provides, but you got to work at it. God provides, but you got to work at it. Ruth chapter 2, verse number 1, the Bible says, And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's. I want you to see Christ right here. A mighty man of wealth. Of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field. <laughs> Not a field, the field. I believe Ruth knew which field to go to, Charlie. Because she don't say, let me go hunt a field. She says, let me now go to the field. The one field. The right field. The field where the harvest was. And the Bible says, and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall, word to promise, find grace. She said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went, and she came, and she gleaned in the, in the, the field. That's twice here in three verses. In the field, after the reapers, and her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging. There's that the field again. Did you get it? You ought to highlight that or underline that through these verses. The field, the field, the field. Belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. Now that's twice in three verses. We found out that Boaz was of the kindred of Elimelech. It's very important when we understand this. May God bless his portion of his precious and his most holy word. You see, Boaz here is mentioned for, three, for, for really several things. He's a man of strength. He's a man of wealth. And he's very rich. I want you to see the picture of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ right here. Who operated in the office of prophet, priest, and king. As a prophet, when the people of Israel were uh, fixing to go to war back in those days, they wanted to hear what the man of God, the prophet, had to say about it before they ever went to war. Hello. Jesus has already told you and I as Christians through the book of Timothy, from Paul writing unto Timothy, he's already given us our marching orders. We have to fight the good fight of faith. There is no question. The battle's out there. The battle is raging. But what the Lord is looking for is his workers, his children, to fight the good fight of faith. And if you ever think it's not going to be a fight, if you think it's going to be easy serving God, you're wrong. Because if you try to do something for the Lord, the devil's going to fight you. And the only way you're going to win and prevail is you're going to have to fight back. And you fight back through the strength of Bible says in the book of Philippians that I and you can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. Amen. But you got to have him if you're going to be able to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. He was a mighty man of war, of law, and the wealth. The prophet for the war. The priest for the law. The Bible says that Jesus came not to destroy the law, but he came to fulfill the law. What does the priest do? The priest represents the people unto God. Yeah. 
Jesus in the book of Hebrews is pictured and told as our eternal high priest. He represents you and me unto God the Father. I want you to see Jesus, even though Boaz is as great as he is, he is nothing compared to our Lord and Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. And as much as Boaz could provide in the field for Ruth, a Moabitess, a pagan, a widow, a poor, and as much as Boaz could provide for her, we've got a Savior that could provide the much more for you and for me. Amen. But you're going to have to work at it. Oh, I know we're saved by grace through faith. Amen. Not of works. Lest any man should burst. It's the gift of God, Ephesians says. But then James says, faith without works is. Y'all have heard that, right? And James also says, you talk of faith. I'll show you my faith by my works. God will provide children of God, but you got to work at it. We want, honey, we want buckets of honey dumped on us today as Christians. We want to come into a service and it just be so spirit-filled. Just lift us up. Just get every birth off. Just float right out of here. But yet you ain't willing to spend some time praying about it. Right. You want your Sunday school lesson to be great. And you want to be able to be a great teacher in the Word of God. But some are not willing to spend the time studying and praying and putting the work in. God will provide, but you got to work at it. Amen. Hello, I've done that as a Sunday school teacher, I'm sad to say. Unprepared. Come in there about half cocked. Had I courtly. Oh, I could struggle through something for a few minutes. Yeah. Huh? But well, God wasn't on that tail. Why? Because I hadn't put the work into it. You want to sing? Why do we have choir practice on Wednesday nights? It ain't just to take up 30 minutes. If it was that, we'd just start Bible study at 6.30. I could use the next 30 minutes anyway. <laughs> Why do we do it? You work at it, you practice so you can get better. Yeah. Hey, you want to do the best you can do for the Lord, right? Amen. He's worthy of us doing our best for him. Yeah. Anything we do, God will provide, but we've got to work at it. Hello. I told you, this ain't the kind of message you hear preach much. Boaz was a man of wealth. Jesus is the king of kings. Had the Lord of lords. He's got all the wealth. He owns the cattle of a thousand hills. Not only does he own the cattle, he owns the hills that graze on. He's got mighty wealth. I want to ask you today, as him in the office of prophet, he tells us what to do. He's given us our marching orders to work for him. As priest, he represents you and me to God. When we've got burdens so heavy, we can't carry them. Donna, we don't know which way to turn. I'm glad we've got an eternal high priest yeah, that amen. can take it to God yeah. for us. When we don't even know how to pray, he knows what to pray for us. Yeah. And then we've got one that can answer because he's the wealthiest of all wealth. And I'm not just talking about money in your billfold. I'm talking about spiritual blessings that you can't contain. This law that was given here that's about to be practiced about gleaning in the field was very serious unto God, and it was a part of the Mosaic Covenant or law, if you will, that was given. This is God's way of providing for the poor. And we've got it mixed up today in America. Yep, yep. We got it mixed up in our society. We got a man trying to to become president this year, who says we'll put everybody on a level playing field. I'll take your car and sell it, and we'll all have nice bicycles the same. <laughs> Telling you like it is. We'll all have universal health care, and everybody will be treated the same, but if you need surgery, we'll get to you in three years. If you're still alive, we'll work on you. Huh? You tell me God ain't smarter than our bunch. I tell you right now, he's smarter. And he put a system out there, and it was so important to God, it is mentioned twice in the book of Leviticus and once in the book of Deuteronomy, and we're going to look at all three passages because I think we need to. In the book of Leviticus, you will find in chapter number 19. Turn with me. Leviticus chapter number 19. It's easy to find. You've got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, third book in the Bible. 
Leviticus 19. I'm going to read two verses. Verse 9 and verse 10. And this was a law given by Moses concerning personal conduct. Oh, we don't like our personal conduct sometimes, do we? Huh? Oh. Verse 9. And when you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field. Neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest. And thou shalt not glean thy vineyard. Neither shalt thou gather every grape of thy vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and the stranger. I am the Lord your God. In other words, he puts his name on it and he says, this law is secure and I've sealed it with my name. And somewhere else in Leviticus in chapter 23, a couple of chapters over, chapter 23, verse 22, one verse here, it says, I like to hear them pages turning. And when you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of the field when thou reapest, neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. Thou shalt lead them unto the poor and to the stranger. You listen to this. I am the Lord your God. He said, I've signed it again for you. He said, for you hard-headed bunch that didn't hear it two chapters ago, I'm going to let you know I still believe it. I still put my name on it, and you better obey it. Amen. Now let's look at the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 24. And I remind you, the book of Deuteronomy was written unto a new generation that's a getting ready to enter the promised land. Yeah. See, God still hadn't changed his name about it. He, listen, whoa, hello here. Let me give you some help. He'd already promised to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, but he knew there were still going to be poor people. And here in Deuteronomy, he says, my law's still in effect. You're still to leave for the poor of the land. Amen. Even in the land of milk and honey. Yeah. Deuteronomy 24, verses 19 and 22. And the Bible says this, 19 through 22, When thou cuttest down thine harvest in thy field, and hast forgot a sheaf in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. Oh, hello, Ruth. Yeah, yeah. That the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the works of thy hands. Hey, I'm here to tell you, God will provide, but you got to work at it. Amen. Verse 20, when thou beatest thine olive tree, thou shalt not go over the boughs again. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. When thou gatherest the grapes of thy vineyard, thou shalt not glean it afterward. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. Do you understand who this is for? The stranger and the fatherless and the widow. Verse 22, and thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I command thee to do this thing. God mentions it three times right here. He's serious about it. I'm glad through the word of God, you know, the Jews always required two or three to have a witness or something. I'm glad whatever you're needing from the Word of God, you can go find it in two or three places. You don't have to cherry pick you something to fit your theology, Osteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or go against your theology, Osteen. I tell you what you can do. If God says it, you'll find it in multiple places through right. the Old and through the New Testament. Amen. And he means business about it. Yeah. And when somebody tries to cherry pick a passage to fit what they want, and you, you can't back it up that way. God was serious about this law. And you see, you and I need to understand. I don't understand why some are poor. But what did Jesus say over there in the New Testament? He said, the poor you have with you always. Right? Yep. When that dear lady took that alabaster box of ointment and broke it, a year's worth of wages, and anointed him, Judas said, what a way. Couldn't this have been given unto the poor? What do you think that old thief with the money bag's going to do anyway? Yeah. 
Jesus said, the poor you have with you all the ways. He said, you leave this woman alone. What she's done is until the day of my death or my burial. You see, God is concerned about poor people. And today, you listen out there, Internet. And you listen good. And I wish the whole world could hear this message. Because we've got a bunch of people today that don't care nothing about God, right. don't care nothing about the church houses, don't care nothing about you as Christians. But I tell you what they're bold enough to do. They'll pick up the phone. They'll call. They'll beg to see if a church will hand them out and Amen. throw them out some and Amen. give it to them, but they're not interested about their soul. They don't care about drawing close to God. They don't care about getting saved. All they want to do is fill their belly. Amen. And God's word still hasn't changed. God said, I love the poor. I'll provide for the poor, but the poor's able to work, so let them go work. Amen. Right. The Bible says in the book of Sacca Thessalonians, that if the man will not work, neither should he eat. Right. And instead of handing out, handing out, handing out, and we as Baptists, we are the most greatest group of atheists. I told y'all this ain't a message you hear preach much. You heard. <laughs> we as Baptists, we are the world's best. Ah, uh, we help missions. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. The baby bottle and the change and the, all this stuff, that's great and that's wonderful. But let's not sit back and say, I filled up seven baby bottles full of quarters. God, didn't I do something for you? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hmm? I tell you what you and I ought to be doing. God help me right here. And I may not get this all preached today. But there is the field. The field. Yep. And Jesus says, oh, don't you look. He said, the fields are white <laughs> under harvest. But where's the laborers? Yeah. Where's the reapers? Where are they at? That's what he says. <coughs> These things we do are great, and we should do them. And there's nothing wrong with that. But let's not think we've done something great because we wrote a check. Amen. You know how you was able to write a $10,000 check to mission? Because God put you 100000 in your banking account. If yeah. it wasn't for God putting 100000 in there, you couldn't write a $10,000 check. Hello right there. Yeah. Hard for you to write a $10,000 check. You got $10. Yeah. Amen. Let's not think we've done something great when we do these things. We need to be in the field where the work, where the poor's at. And the field, hey, they're still poor in the field today. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I'm trying to preach this thing by God's help, Luke. The most of our field, I believe, is people that are saved and under the good grace of God. But in the corners of the field, there's still some poor. You say, who are they? They're the poor in spirit. They're the lost that's never been born again. They're without Jesus. And you and I, as reapers in the field, we want to gather it all up. We want to get all God can give us, and yet we don't want to leave a few uh, handfuls of purpose laying out yonder in the corner so some lost person might get saved. God help me this morning to preach about five minutes right here. If you and I would be so concerned about what we could do for God rather than what God could do for us. When we came into God's house, we just wanted to bless him. I, we just wanted to praise him. I, we just wanted to worship him. Oh, our cup will fill up so good uh, that it'll run over and there'll be some left in the corners of the field. Uh, and when the lost people uh, leave the house of God, uh, they're going to know something happened there. Uh, something was good there. Uh, it wasn't boring. Uh, nobody went to sleep. Uh, heaven opened up. Jesus came by. And they might just want some of that. But you and I want to clean up all the corners of the field. Yeah. Dot all the I's, cross all the T's, sing all the songs just right, not make a mistake. We want to be so fancified and so <coughs> and perfect. We ain't no count no more. Mm -hmm. I remind you, Ruth and Naomi came back to Bethlehem, Judah in the beginning of the barley harvest season. And you and I can have a great harvest for the Lord sometimes. Y'all know I'm being honest right here. God's done some great things here at Victory Baptist Church through the years. But you can't just rest on the past blessings because they won't suffice for the present hour. There's still a work to be done. There's still souls that are lost. 
There's still things we need to do. We need to be serious about working for the Lord. God will provide, but we still got to work at it. And I'm afraid our workers in the churches have gone to the sidelines and sat down and said, let somebody else work. No. No. Listen to me. I'm now 5-0, and I'm okay with it. That don't bother me. <laughs> I'm getting closer to my eternal home Amen. whenever he calls. Whatever your profession or your job is or whatever you do, some of you's counting down your time to retire. Some of you's already retired. Whatever you're doing. I'll remind you, in this, what I'm doing, it's a calling. And as God, as long as he gives me health and strength, 70 shouldn't stop me, 80 shouldn't stop me, and 90 shouldn't stop me. Yeah. And neither should it stop you at serving God. But too many of you said, I'm too old to sing in the choir. I'm too old to sing a solo. I'm too old to do this. I'm too old to do that but you ain't too old for Jackie Jones. Yeah. <laughs> hmm? <Yeah>. <laughs> Preacher, don't preach that. That's what's wrong in the churches today. Yeah. Churches get back to work and people get busy about serving God we'll start seeing souls saved again. Amen. God will provide, but you got to work at it. Are you getting this one point message today? Yeah. I hope you are. Politicians, they don't care about the poor. All they do is want their votes. Yeah, amen. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Ain't bribery illegal? <laughs> is it bribery? Bribery <laughs> illegal? Yeah. Well, what the politicians do is legal bribery. Yeah. Yeah. You give me your money, <coughs> and I'll give you what you want. Money ain't no problem. We got printers that print them every day. But we so many trillions in debt, we'll never get it fixed. I think we're all pretty poor. How you back up the dollar? When you ain't got it. When you ain't got it, how you back it up? China says, don't worry about it. We'll clean the books and start over. Ain't they communist? Hey, where are we headed, America? Because people's quit working. Mm -hmm. Some of you thinking, well, in 20 years, I'll start drawing my Social Security check if I live long enough or 30 years. Guess what? The bunch that's coming along now ain't working. I don't know how you're going to get a check if ain't nobody putting in. Mm -hmm. Oh, the government will provide. You see how this march is headed towards socialism and towards communism? Mm -hmm. Now, let me put it in a spiritual sense. What about the churches today? The churches are dying left and right. The gray-headed saints are dying and going out into eternity and nobody is filling their places in the pews. You know why nobody's filling their places in the pews? Because the workers don't work. Yeah. And you say, well, God's going to provide. Hey, God don't provide unless you work. We're getting ready to go on visitation for Bible school at least two times. I wonder how many going to show up. I dare say I can just about go in my office. I ain't being mean when I say this. I just about say I can go in my office and write a list right now of who won't be here, and you see how accurate it is that day. And I'll write on the list who will be here, and you see how close I am. I bet I'll be within 95%, and that's two months away. They don't like these kind of ministers. I'm reminded there's still a bill. There's still measures made. What are you and I doing about it? We want to reap the whole field. God said, don't do that. I've told you three times, twice in Leviticus, once in Deuteronomy. You will leave your corner of your field for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. And I'm going to tell you something else about these workers as we go further and deeper into the book of Ruth. I believe God's putting us here. Something I want us to see as we go farther and we go deeper. The worker's eyes was on Ruth. Because we'll find out later when Boaz came by and said, Hark, who goeth there? That's not in the Bible. But you know what I'm saying. He said, who is that damsel? I ain't never seen her before. And the worker said, we've been watching her. We've been seeing her. And Boaz says, whoa, wait a minute. She's a pretty thing. She's caught my eye. 
She's different than the other ladies. I ain't never seen one quite. You know what Ruth's name meant anyway, don't it? Beauty. And when you and I as Christians, we're too bad to see sinners lost as ugly. Their sin is ugly. But we should really see them as beautiful. Needing a Savior. Their eyes were on this damsel in the corners of the field. Now notice this. We're going to get in it as we go, day after day. Hey, God help me right here because I'm going to shut her down. They came to Bethlehem, Judah, in the beginning of the barley harvest. That harvest is about six weeks long. Day after day, the workers and Boaz, who is a picture of Christ, Kept noticing this poor little damsel gleaning in the corners of the right field. Day after day, they took notice. But I'm going to tell you something. Because of her faithfulness, God will provide. But you got to work at it. Are y'all getting this point? Day after day in the hot sun, she's out there minding her own business. She ain't a fussing in a feud with nobody. She ain't giving her opinions on how the church ought to be run or how the church ought to be done. She just says, I want to do my part and work for the Lord in this corner of the field, if you will. Week after week, she kept gleaning. But then there come a time. <laughs> they's having a celebration at the threshing floor. Naomi, which is a picture of you and I as Christians trying to help lost people get to Jesus. Naomi said, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. I'm getting ahead of myself. Said, you go up yonder to the threshing floor. That's where they're at. And I'm going to tell you what happened. She went from poor to rich. Amen. She went from a widow to married to one of the wealthiest, strongest men in all of Bethlehem, Judah. Yeah. She went from an orphan to a child of the king. Amen. Because she never let up during the harvest season. She kept working. Hey, church, I'm going to ask you a question. Come get the invitation. Whoever's playing it, get the invitation. I'm through. We're going to ask you something, church. Are you serious about serving God still? You still want to see souls birthed into the family of God? Do you want to continue to grow spiritually? Do you want the Lord to bless you and keep working in your life? He don't need your checks you write every week. He don't. He's a mighty man of wealth. He got it all. But I tell you what, by you giving back to him, that's worship. And by you doing your part, he'll bless you. You ain't going to hurt the church by not paying nothing. You're going to hurt yourself. Church going to go on. God will provide. What God's looking for is some boots on the ground. He wants some people doing some work in the field. I don't know about y'all, but I know how it was when I was growing up on the tobacco farm. <laughs> Whew. Thank God for them days, but I'm glad I'm not in them right now. <laughs> but all the young folks ought to have to do that a little bit. Amen. Mm -hmm. But I know how I was as a young'un, a younger fella. <laughs> Listen, me and my grandpa raised a little crop together. Half of that money was mine, the profit. And when grandpa went to the barn, I was like the rest of them. Gosh, y'all, let's sit down. And I was paying them with theirs. That's as sorry as they was. Hmm? <coughs> Hear the old tractor fire up, see the fumes run out of that stack. Let's go, y'all. We got to get some priming done on this sled because the time he gets up here with that empty sled, we better have something done. Hmm? Yeah. How about it in our Christian lives today? How about it? Preacher ain't watching, preacher don't see, we'll lay down. Grandpa would come back to the field. He'd say, how come y'all ain't got that sled done for us? We've been working. He knows what we's doing. <laughs> huh? Preacher knows what you're doing, but more importantly, God knows Amen. what you're doing. Amen. That's what counts. Right. Are we workers for the Lord? God provides <coughs> if you work at it. Listen, I do think there is a permissive will of God and there is a perfected will of God. And I know there's some preachers that disagree with that. 
Let me explain. You can go home today, lay down on your couch, not get up and go to work tomorrow, and lay right there, and God will let you lay right there and go bankrupt. He'll let your cabinets empty out of food. Huh? Yeah. He permits it because you're being sorry. Guess what, church? He does the same thing. You get slack on God, you get slack on your responsibilities and your duties and working for the Lord, he'll permit it, and then one day you'll wake up and say, spiritually, we're bankrupt. God don't bless us like he used to. The spirit don't flow like he used to. i tell you why. Because too many is laid on the couch and quit working for the Lord. But I'll tell you, there is the perfected will of God. And the perfected will of God is when we do what he asks us to do. That's the perfected will of God. Listen to me. Now I'm going to shut her down. Ruth could have sat at the house with Naomi for those six weeks during the barley season and whined and cried and begged and nobody would have felt because God's already given a law how he provided for the poor she didn't do that she did the perfected will of God she got up she went to the field and she worked day after day after day and we'll get into the reward that comes by her faithfulness let's stand if you're here and you're lost I invite you to Jesus. Church, if there's areas in your life that need help, you need to grow, you need to get stronger, some of you's got to learn to get out there in the corners of the field. Wash your plate. They had no idea what I was going to preach this morning. And she's playing. Wherever he leads, I'll go, would you? No, we'll go where we want to go if we feel like he's leading us in a comfortable place. God's not through at Victory Baptist Church. I want you to know that, folks. But sometimes you'll have lulls because he permits us so that one day, hopefully, we'll open our eyes and see our laziness and our slothfulness. Then you'll appreciate when you work for the Lord when he dumps the honey on you. I know this was a challenging message this morning. Now, I make no apologies for it, but I'm going to tell you folks something. One day you're going to stand before God. And you can sit here in these pews and stand in these pews and act like you're in love with him and everything's right, and he knows it ain't. I ain't going to judge you, but he's going to judge you out of his books one day. What will you say then? What will you say? i tell you what you'll say. You'll say, Lord, I'm sorry. I was lazy. I was no good in the work of the kingdom. Too many people want to go and get the rewards of what they can get right now. Listen to me today, Christian, and I'm going to shut her down. If your service for the Lord is so you can receive some gratification right now, your motivation's wrong. If you love the Lord and you're serving God and you're trying to do what you do for the Lord, the world hates your guts. The only way the world will gratify you is when you run with the world. I may preach another 10 minutes. The world loves those that do worldly. The world praises those that serve worldliness. But those that serve the Lord and work for the Lord, they seem so poor 
They seem so hated in this world. They seem so despised. They seem so rejected. And yet we as Christians aren't willing to accept that anymore. You need to look back to the Savior that we serve. He was despised. He was rejected. That's what the Bible says. And if we call ourselves Christians, we need to be prepared to be despised and rejected as well. But I got news. Hallelujah. Payday's on the way for the child of God. We won't reach the corners no more. One day we'll walk on a street uh, that's pure gold uh, and there'll be walls of Casper and gates of God pearl. Uh, hallelujah. Why don't you do something for him that's your eternal home. I don't know about you, but when I get there, Donna, I want to be able to say at least I've tried to do something. I know I'm not saved by works, but I am saved unto two good works. And when I get home, I want to be able to say, yeah, I love spending some time here. I didn't do a lot, but at least I did something for my king before I got here. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of Christians get there and ain't done nothing. Right. But I'm glad he's still a mighty man of strength, war, and wealth. I believe the invitation is sufficient. Anybody got a word before we go? I didn't think so. Jeff dismisses in prayer.